दी उपनिषद सीरीज मौजूद द इम्पीकेबल मैन ऑफ ट्रस्ट मीटिंग हिजर सलाम मौजूद मीटिंग द गाइड ऑफ सूफीज हिजर सलाम दिस इज वन ऑफ द most beautiful and greatest stories it has that special flavor that only a sufi story can have it is incomparable if you can understand this story you will understand the very secret of religion the meaning of trust if you cannot understand this you will not be able to understand religion at all this belongs to the very foundation of religious consciousness and trust is the pillar on which religious consciousness rests without it there can be no religious transformation so listen to this story as attentively as possible and let this story sink into your consciousness this will open a door it can become such a radical change in your life that you may never be the same again but this story has to be understood very minutely very carefully very lovingly because it is a strange tale till a man named maujood maujood is a urdu word that means one who is available available means you are available to the moment people sit down and engage in conversation but they are not away they are not in that conversation you are eating food in a restaurant but you are somewhere else you are not present present means this very moment when you are available to this very moment you are maujood and then this is the first and the foremost requirement is you are available to this very moment and the second is the impeccable trust these two things are important you cannot remain in the past which is no more you cannot remain thinking about the future which is not either this very moment is relevant it is dynamic it has the capacity to bring about transformation into you and then the trust trusting the unknown and unknowable is the important pillar of inward journey so this particular story is woven around these two aspects the character is maujood available to the moment and he listens to the unknown and unknowable without a second thought that is why he is a man of impeccable trust it is not just a story and remember sufi stories are not just stories they are not to entertain you they are not just to give you an occupation keep you busy or it is the lunch time stories or bed time stories they are teaching devices they indicate something they show something they point to something they are the pointers they are arrows towards the unknown fingers pointing to the moon and remember this saying of sufis do not bite my finger look where it is pointing 
It is very easy to be entertained by such stories, but that is not their purpose. And if you want to be entertained, then you will miss the point. They are reflections of the beyond. They say that which cannot be said and they try to express which is inexpressible. Truth cannot be expressed. It only thing is the master can create an ambience, an environment, a situation for you to realize the truth. They do not belong to the ordinary life. They are not about the ordinary life. They are not about the mundane world. They belong to the innermost search for truth. Innermost search for truth. They belong to the center of your being. These are beautiful devices. If you simply pay attention, if you meditate on this story, parallel to this story, something else will start revealing itself in your being. If you simply pay attention, if you meditate on this story, parallel to this story, something else will start revealing itself in you. The story is on one plane, but the revelation happens on another plane, side by side, parallel to it. Unless you start tasting that parallel revelation, remember you have missed the point. And to miss the point, is very easy. To miss the point, no intelligence is needed. Any stupid person can do it. But to understand, it will require great intelligence. So pull yourself together. Become integrated for these few moments. Listen as totally as possible. Try to absorb, just become the heirs and be there, nothing else is important, you are simply the heirs. Something of the immense value is being imparted to you through this story. You will recall the Lewis Carroll's story, looking through the glass. There comes this beautiful passage. The Queen says to Alice, who was a standing in a world, she would not believe. I dare say, you have not had much practice. Why? Sometimes I have believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Yes, this is the secret of this story. Lewis Carroll is imparting something immensely beautiful and valuable there. The secret of this story is the art of believing, the art of trusting, and the art of saying yes to the existence, to the unknown and unknowable. But because of tremendous fear, our conditioning, we are never ready to say yes to the unknown and unknowable. Trusting is impossible. The impossible becomes possible. How does it happen? In fact, things are impossible only because you do not have the courage to trust. Trust requires tremendous courage on your part. Each thought can become a thing and all that happens inside the consciousness can create its reality outside. First it has to happen within your consciousness and then it will manifest 
outside. All that happens outside has to happen inside first. The seed is absorbed inside and the tree grows outside. The seed is planted in the womb of the earth in darkness and the tree grows above the ground in light. If you have a trusting heart, Nothing is impossible. Even God is not impossible what to talk of the mundane. But you need to have a heart that is overflowing trust. A believing mind won't do. That is the conditioning. Because mind basically cannot believe. It is incapable of belief. Mind can only doubt. Doubt is very natural for the mind. Doubt is intricate to the mind. The head cannot but doubt. So if you start forcing trust in your head, those beliefs will only hide your doubt. The process will hide your doubt. Nothing will happen out of them. And that is where Mohammedans, Christians and Hindus all exist. Their belief is of the mind and mind is incapable of belief. It is not possible for the mind to believe. Mind can only doubt. Doubt grows out of the mind. The soil of the mind is such that only doubt can grow. Trust, love, understanding does not grow. If you can only believe, so the mind believe that I believe in the Bible, that I believe in the Quran, that I believe in Das Capital, that I believe in Mahabir, that I believe in Moses, Mao or Hindu scriptures is just a pseudo phenomena. Head can only create pseudo things, substitutes. You can remain engaged in them but your life will be a waste. You will remain a wasteland, a desert. You will never blossom. And for blossom, a different kind of a journey has to begin. A totally different kind of a journey. You have never known what an oasis is. You never know any joy, any celebration. So when I say believing can make impossible things possible, I mean Believing that comes out of heart, an innocent heart, the heart of a child which knows not how to say no. Mind is cunning, heart is innocent. You need to have an innocent heart, the heart of a child which knows not to say no, which knows only yes. Yes, not against no. Not that the child says no inside and yes outside. Then it is, in that case, it is of the head. And that is the way of the head. Outside yes and inside remains a big no. The head is schizophrenic. It is never total and one. When heart says yes, it simply says yes and it means there is no conflict, there is no division. All that is important happens when yes emerges from the heart. The heart is integrated in its yes, that is true believing or you call it trust. It is a heart phenomena. Trust is a phenomena of heart. It is not a thought but a feeling. An ultimate 
it is a being not just a feeling in the beginning trust always happens as a feeling and in the final flowering when the feeling blossoms it becomes being remember in the beginning trust is a feeling feeling is the seed and when the seed blossoms in the soil of the heart it blossoms into being as the feeling grows blossoms being is born into you the so called belief remains in the head they never become your feeling and when there is no feeling there can be no being and unless something becomes your being it is just a dream a wastage of energy and it cannot transform you but believing requires tremendous risk when i say risk i mean tremendous risk is required you have to trust the unknown believing needs risking you will be surprised to know that doubt is very cowardly ordinarily you must have heard that brave people doubt that cowards believe that too is true in a sense the one who is a head believer is cowardly you know only those in who are believers through the head so it corresponds with the reality if you go into the mosque churches and the temples you will find them full of cowards the real belief is not outward instead it is a great courage heroic doubt arises out of fear how can it be brave doubt is rooted in fear doubt arises because there is a longing to defend oneself to protect to be secure you can trust only if you are ready to go in a state of insecurity if you are ready to go into the uncharted the unknown the unknowable if you are ready to sail your boat without any map into the unknown trust means immense courage and only a courageous person can be religious because only a courageous person can say yes to the present moment and that is how it is and this whole story of maujood is a story of tremendous courage he is ready to say yes to every circumstance and situation not knowing what will happen next moment but there is always and overflowing a dancing yes is there on his lips doubt is defense and even if you are defended by it you remain stuck you cannot move because each moment each circumstance each situation each act brings fear because each movement is movement into the unknown the unfamiliar each moment that comes in front of you is a journey into the unknown doubt is the by product of fear remember it then what is believing it is a by product of love only those who know how to love know how to believe love arises from the heart doubt arises in the head the person who lives in the head remains a coward because he is constantly 
living in fear, his effort to move towards the heart because one never knows where the heart will take you to. Heart is an adventurer, the explorer of the mysteries, the discoverer of all that is hidden. Heart is always on the pilgrimage, on a secret voyage. It is never satisfied. It has an innermost discontent, a spiritual discontent. It never settles anywhere. It is very much in love with movement and dynamism. Heart is satisfied only when it has come to the ultimate, beyond which there is nowhere to go. The mundane cannot satisfy it. Heart is never conventional. It is revolutionary. It is always leaping from one state into another, always risking. Whatsoever it has, it is always ready to gamble it for the unknown. It desires, its desire is to know that which truly is. That is what God is all about. Heart belongs, heart longs for the adventure, for the danger. It longs for the uncharted, the unknown, the insecure. It hankers for the oceanic experience, not satisfied with the ordinary drop-like experiences. It wants to dissolve, wants to disappear into the unknown, the totality. He had his effort, effort of dying, effort of disappearing. When river faced the desert, encountered the desert, it was the head that was saying, don't evaporate. Otherwise, who know where you will land? Who will you be then? Your identity will be erased forever. You may not be able to be again as you are. It was the head. But the heart understood the whisperings of the desert, something deep inside felt a conviction, yes, this is not my destiny to be just a river losing itself in the desert. I have to go beyond. I have to take the risk. It is dangerous and there is no guarantee. But the moment the river is started thinking of risking. Somewhere deep in the unconscious it has started feeling the glimpses. Memories started arising. It has started the feeling, yes, there is somewhere, some experience. I have been in the hands of the winds before too. When you trust your unconscious starts revealing many things to you. It reveals itself only to a trusting mind, only to the trusting being, only for the trusting consciousness. Religion is the fragrance of the trust, impeccable, absolute. Let us now go into this story. One day, I would, like you, I would like you to listen to this one story. One day an atheist was walking along a cliff when he slipped and fell over the edge. As he plunged downward, he managed to grab the branch of a small tree that was growing from a crevice on the mountain on the rock. Hanging there, swaying in the cold wind, he realized how hopeless his position was, for below was ragged, deep valley, boulders, and there was no way 
to climb up. He gripped a branch that was weakening. Well, he thought only God can save me now. I have never believed in God, but I might be wrong. What have I to lose? So he called up God. If you exist, if you exist at all, save me. I will believe in you. There was no answer. He called again. Please God, I never believed in you. But if you will save me, I will believe in you from now onwards. Suddenly a great voice boomed down from the clouds. Oh no, you won't. I know your kind. I know you. The man was so surprised he almost lost the grip of the branch. Please God, you are wrong. I really mean it. I will believe. Oh no, you won't, the voice came. That is what they all say. The man pleaded and argued again and again. Finally, the God said, All right, I will save you. But you have to trust me. What do I have to do? Asked the man. God said, I will save you. Let go of the branch. Let go of the branch. And the man exclaimed, Do you think I am crazy? Atheism is always cowardly. Great things happen only to those who are courageous. The really brave person is bound to become religious and the religious person is necessarily brave. If you find a cowardly person religious, then you can know that something is wrong. His yes is not coming out of love and courage. His eyes are full of fear. If it was possible to say no, he would have said no. His yes is coming because death is there, disease is there, Danger is there, so he thinks, what am I to lose? Why not believe? Why not pray? His prayer is bogus. His prayer is nothing but an expression of fear. Out of fear, one goes to the temple, to the church, to the priest and the mosque. When a person is really courageous, he will not go to a priest, he will go to a master instead. He will not go to a dead church or a mosque or temple, he start trying and searching for some alive phenomenon. He goes to a Christ or a Buddha or a Krishna, but he does not go to the church. He does not go to the orthodoxies. He does not believe in the past. He moves in the present. And whatsoever he does is out of courage. He says yes. He says it out of courage, out of love for existence, out of deep understanding that he is part of the whole cosmos. He is not separate. Saying yes, saying no is saying no to one's own roots. If the tree says no to the earth, what will be the fate of the tree? It is committing suicide. If the tree says no to the sun, what will be the fate of the tree? It will be committing suicide again. The tree cannot say no to the sun. It cannot say no to the earth. The tree has to say yes to the sun and to the earth, to the wind, to the clouds, to the rain. 
The tree has to remain a yes attitude continuously day in and day out. This is the attitude of a religious person. When breeze blows, there is a yes on his lips. When rain clouds are full, ready to shower, it says yes. The tree has to remain in a perennial, continuous yes attitude day in and day out. Only then the tree can blossom, can remain green, alive and grow. Man is rooted in existence. The earth, the fire, the water, the ether, all support. Saying no is poisoning your own system. To whom are you saying no? To your own earth that constitutes you? To your own sky that provides you the enormous space? To your own sun which is the cause of your existence? you will start getting paralyzed. The really courageous person looks around, feels, sees that he is a part of this totality. You are not alien nor as a strangers join, you are bound to each other by a causeless force. Once there was a king who loved humble maiden. The king was so powerful and well established that he could not marry her without being forced to abdicate. If he was to marry her, the king knew he would have to make her forever grateful. It occurred to him, though that something would be wanting in her happiness, she would always admire him and thank him but she would not be able to love him. For the inequality between them would be too great and she would never be able to forget her humble origin and her debt of gratitude. So he decided upon another way. Instead of making her a queen, he would renounce the kingship, he would become a common man and then after her, his love. In doing this, he realized that he was taking a great risk. He was doing something that would be foolish in the eyes of the most of the people of his kingdom. Perhaps even in her own eyes. He would lose the kingship and might also be rejected by her, specifically if she was disappointed at not becoming a queen. Yet he decided to take this risk. It was better, he believed, to risk everything in order to make love possible. Seeking searching for God, for truth, for bliss. This moment comes again and again to risk. All cleverness will be against it. It is better to risk all. If there is only a very slight possibility of attaining to love, even then one has to risk all. And one has to risk all again and again and many a times before one arrives to the ultimate, the ultimate love. God ordinarily, we seek and search for God only in limits. Whatsoever is allowed by our condition conditions without risking anything. You are earning money, you are having a success in life, you can spare one hour for the temple or for meditation. Once in a while you can pray too or at least in the night before you go to bed you can 
repeat the same prayer for two minutes and fall asleep and feel very good that you are doing a religious act. Religion is not doing, it is being. Either it is for 24 hours in your being is spread all over or it is not there at all. Just a night prayer before going to bed is a kind of deception you are playing upon yourself. Now let us go into this story. It has to be savored, tasted, digested slowly and slowly, then you will be able to understand it. The man with inexplicable life. Life indeed is inexplicable. If you have it, if you are really alive, there is something so mysterious about it that it cannot be explained in any way. There is no explanation for it. If you can explain your life, that simply means you are dead and you are not alive. If you can find a man who can explain his life end to end logically, you can be certain that he may be a computer, a machine, but not alive. Only dead things can be explained end to end. Life is a mystery. So whenever one is alive, one is mysterious. Whenever you come around a person who is alive, you will feel a certain kind of mystery surrounding him, some inexplicable phenomena around him. You will be touched by something that you cannot figure out what is so unique about this person. You cannot have any mathematics of life. Life remains intrinsically poetic. It is the beauty to be seen, not a fact to be explained. Once there was a man named Maujud. The word Maujud is beautiful. It means two things. Literally, it means one who is present. Maujud means one who has an inner presence, who is aware, who is alert, who is conscious. And it has another meaning which comes from the first. One who lives in the present moment, one who is present to this moment. Those two things are two aspects of the same phenomenon. If you are present within, if you have a presence of consciousness, the second thing will automatically happen. You will be present to this very moment. You will not have any past. You will not have any future. You will know only this very moment. And this very moment is vast. The moment is enormous. The moment has captured eternity in it. Only those who are alive, who live in the present moment, only those who are present to the present know what eternity is, know what deathlessness is, what a deathless life is, know the mystery, the inexplicable mystery. Even by knowing it, you cannot explain it to anybody else. You can simply indicate. You can say how to reach it, but you cannot say what it is. And you cannot say why it is. There is no why. It is simply there. Without any explanation, life exists. There is no why in it. Philosophers go on thinking why, why and why. 
and they go on fabricating systems to answer the why, but not a single answer has been true. And never will it be true because you have asked the wrong question from the very beginning. You can ask a wrong question, you will never come to the right answer. A wrong question will take you to the wrong answers. Why? If a question is wrong, how can you get the right answer? Science does not ask why. Religion does not ask why. Religion is the science of inner. Science is the religion of the outer. Between these two is philosophy. Just standing between the two. It asks why and gets very mixed and gets very much confused. Why cannot be asked? Why should not be asked? Even if you find some explanation as to why, the question will remain and again and again asked. The story of Maujud will continue because this is a continuous story.